I'm OG, y'all new to the game. Okay, y'all, I'm kind of in a hurry. Um, Got to hurry up and get to work. Didn't throw out any meat. Um, it's Tuesday, had to be up and out the door by 8 and everything. So that's cool. I'm about to show y'all my way in real quick. Yesterday, I was like 197 point something. Forgot, you could go look at the last video or I'll put it on the screen, whatever. Let's do it. Right now, sitting at 196 flat. So that's pleasant. Let's go make this food. Okay, so the reason all you saw me preparing was potatoes is because that's all I had to prepare today. I didn't, um, like I said, I didn't thaw out any meat. We had leftover um, barbecue, so that's some, I think, some kind of fatty steak. It's delicious with um, a lot less potatoes than I usually have, and that's simply because the steak is fatty. I usually have four to five medium potatoes a day. This is only three. Like two medium, one small one. So I'm going to put some barbecue sauce on all that. When I find a barbecue sauce, side note, that, those aren't my only two meals today, okay? So, also, just gonna be like a little side meal, right? It's some, this is some coleslaw. This has about 13 grams of fat in it. Today's gonna be a really fatty day, but like I said, for my first week, I'm not tracking macros. Just doing the calories. I've come up with the calories. All this is gonna be about 1,900 calories, so I haven't even showed you the rest. This is really fatty, but it's like coleslaw, kale, and stuff, and I don't count uh, leafy greens and shit like that. I have this. This is 300 calories. I'm gonna use this entire little pack, and two packs of this hot buffalo style tuna creations. The macros on this is, not that I'm counting them, but it's always nice to know. Uh, 0.5 grams of fat, zero carbs, 15 grams of protein, and I'm getting two. So that's 30 grams, that's one gram of fat and 30 grams of protein that I'm gonna add to this with these, and that's gonna be one of my meals, and that's gonna be a really good meal. Along with these two meals, throw some barbecue sauce on that bitch, and I'll see y'all at the gym. And we're at the gym. What's good, y'all? Tonight, we hitting chest. Y'all see that? It's not supposed to be like that. Anyway, I picked this huge gash in my finger. And it's like, I haven't had new skin on my hand in so long because y'all know when you lift, like the skin, all this up here, it's just like hard as a rock. I could, so far in there, I could like stick a needle and like I wouldn't feel it. But this skin, I guess, I mean, from wear and tear, it just kind of ripped. I was like, fuck it, uh. And I pulled the whole thing off, and it's new skin under there. And like, you can see it's kind of, if you, my camera don't want to focus on it, but it's like bloody, and you can kind of see it under there. And I was like, it doesn't hurt on the day-to-day, -day, but walking around, like, lifting now, it's really, it's, it's kind of like deadlifting. You know how... The first time you use chalk, you put like 50 pounds on your deadlift. At least that's what the fuck happened to me. Because you don't realize how much of an effect your hands have on your lifts. That little pain, those 105s for now felt like heavy as fuck. I've hit 115s for 10. So, that's just... And it's painful, like, that little ass fucking piece of nothing is painful as fuck. But we still pushing.
All right, y'all, I said I was gonna go to Incline next, but there's, it's kinda crowded down there, so. I'ma just fuck with these machines, and I'm not gonna do, uh, damn. That shit throbbing. That right there. We still pushing, though. Ah. But I was gonna go to Incline, but I'm not, because there's people down there, it's fucking crowded. Having a camera, like, stand, and, you get it, let's do it. This range of motion on this machine is short to say the least. So what I do is I do heavyweight high rep. I don't want to put words on the screen and do all that editing tonight. So basically, I'm going to just talk y'all through this workout. Here, I'm doing four to five sets, 12 to 15 reps because of the short range of motion. Dumbbells, I showed y'all every set I did. I'm not doing a shit ton of sets tonight for some reason. I don't feel like it. And I have to edit tonight. This is becoming an every night thing. So I'm going to stop taking pre-workout because I usually only take pre-workout on leg day. I even stopped it on back day, but... I'm taking pre-workout. This is the second time this week, and we're on day two of the week, so. Okay. Alright y'all, before I start this talk or Q&A or whatever, I'm gonna, you know, no, 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 today I'm gonna do another topic and then I'm gonna post something tomorrow about like a Q&A and then I'm gonna do a Q&A tomorrow because these talks might get more for some of y'all. Some of y'all really like it though. Um, but to piggyback off of the last thing I was talking about, I'm about to start my cardio. To piggyback off of the last thing that I was talking about with Kylie Muscle and what Chris Jones and them were saying you gotta be self-made, this, that, and the other, I went back and rewatched that and I was like, bro, hold up. Kali Muscle in the video said that he reached out to bigger companies and bigger people when he was small. So why are you dissing people who are doing it now? They were, they're just in the same mindset that you were. Let people evolve. That's all I'm saying about that. But this, this new thing I want to talk about has to do with a YouTuber y'all might know who's not a YouTuber anymore. Um, fuck. His, this guy's name is J.D. Schmidt. Schmitty. I call him Schmitty. I don't know him like that, but I'm saying like from YouTube, I saw his name was Schmidt and I was like, Schmitty. He made a post the other day and I'm not making this to bash nobody, y'all. I'm just making this to like make a point, right? He basically made the post and was just like, yo, I'm done with like fitness as a business, I guess, because he said he still lifted and he was just saying, you know, let me pull it up. He said, that's my lights bright. He said, no longer posting YouTube videos, no more fitness post pictures, deleted my athlete page, and multiple fitness related items on my Facebook and Instagram. No longer wanted to be associated with anything fitness related, just trying to live life and enjoy it. And I just want to make a point out of this, not to bash him or anything like that. I don't, I don't know how to not sound like a dick saying this, right? But when you're a YouTuber, you look at YouTubers who are your size. You look at YouTubers who are like on your level. Of course you reach for like Chris Jones, Christian Guzman, whoever else has all the max tuning, who has all the fucking subscribers. But you, you, you look at your competition or your peers and you look up to some of them, you learn from some of them, you fucking just, you, you get a wide span. I, I watch, I could say a hundred small YouTubers that I subscribe to. I unsubscribe to a lot of them, but I watch a lot and, and something that I see all the time and this goes for if you want to start a YouTube channel, this goes for if you want to start anything like for if fitness related, this shit going to take so long to build. And when I say so long, I don't mean like, 
I don't mean a year or six months. I mean maybe two, three years before you pick up any steam. People were looking at me and was like, bro, you haven't even been done doing YouTube for a year and you got thousands of subscribers. There's a nigga standing by my car. And, yeah, and, and it's not like I have 10,000. I have like 3,000 subs, which is fucking dope. And, and so many of the YouTubers that I watched when I had zero subscribers, when I had 20 subscribers, I went straight past, directly past them. And I just want to like teach a lesson on how and why and how I'm continuing and how I want to get better. If you're a guy, I can only speak for guys, right? If you're a guy, think about the passion you have when you have like a crush on a girl who you actually have a chance with. Like when you're like, you know, she kind of feeling me like, I don't know, but I got to put in this work. Like I, you wake up and go to sleep with that, like, ugh, that weight on your chest if you really like this girl, right? And that's kind of how I took the approach to YouTube growth in general. Um, I copied off of everybody's way of growth just to see how it worked. I, 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 I studied, especially my boy Sean, I studied his shit. I was like, okay, what is he doing? I remember the first encounter I ever had with him was uh, he was marketing his page. He he came in my inbox and he was just like, hey, I have a YouTube page. He was just putting himself out there. I, I have a YouTube page. Um, please check it out. If you like it, please subscribe or some shit like that. And I was like, I subscribed because it taught me. I was like, okay, when I start my YouTube channel, I have to go in everybody's inboxes. Can't be afraid of what people are going to say. No, I want to look at your trash ass shit. No, I don't want to do this. I was like, nah, this is what I have to do. That's the type of shit I say when I study. And he's one of the people who are consistent, you know? So in terms of this guy, J.D. Schmidt, and I don't mean to just point him out. It's so many, I see this with so many people who've had pages before me and people who've had pages after me who start YouTube pages. They go for a good six months, the ones who last longer. They go for a good six months, maybe posting two videos a week, maybe one or none, being inconsistent here and there, and they might have a hundred subscribers by the end of their six months, because they they think they're just gonna fucking post videos, and they're gonna be so fantastically likable that um, that fucking they're just gonna be the next Chris Jones. And unfortunately, that's not how it goes. I have a hundred and something videos on my channel. And of course I could have done things better. I'm still learning, I'm still doing, I'm still pushing. But um, I have over a hundred and something videos on my channel. And I have like 3K subscribers. When I started, I thought I was gonna have 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I still might, who knows? I'm catching like different trends and shit and I'm getting better at this, but I thought that by now I'd be popping. Like I, somebody had to pick me up, notice me. But as you go along and you learn this industry, you learn that YouTube growth is like this. Like you go up, flatline, up, flatline, up, flatline, up, flatline, up, flat. It's never a linear path. It's just like weight loss or some shit like that. Like you have to understand that sometimes some of your videos, like one of my videos got like 90,000 views. Then some of them are gonna get, you know, 500 views. My average view is from 500 to 700 each video. But some videos you see, they, oh, that video got a thousand views. That video got this many views. That video got this many views. Depending on what kind of channel you are, if you're a controversy channel, this, that, and the other, you have to put in all of these variables if you want to be a YouTuber. And so the reason I'm using JD Schmidt as a example for y'all is because I watched him slowly crash and burn he was doing these um videos about his cut and um he had what i call no juice it was just so uh, his video structure was beautiful and it was something i was I, I actually admired i was like okay he he's here he's here you could tell he had great structure you could tell he was a very disciplined fellow like he went through with his cut like so particular and so disciplined and like i pulled motivation from that i can't lie but it was just so boring. There was nothing exciting. There was nothing, um, just nothing. It, it was just terrible. And then you could see that his subscriber count wasn't going up. So what did he do? He tried to copy off of the Hodge twins. And he just started doing food reviews and shit like that. And if you're watching this, bro, I'm not, I'm not like thrashing you. You just came off as a very good example. And then, so what I'm saying is, one day he just up and said, you know what? Fuck all of this. I don't know what's going on in his life. Who knows? Anything could happen. But I'm saying, this is the trend that I see in a lot of small YouTubers. A lot. A lot of small YouTubers. Listen. 
y'all see certain pages just start and blow up. And it's like, oh my God, I can do that. Chances are you can't. You have to actually like making videos. You have to like picking up this fucking camera, big ass DSLR, and talking about shit, making videos, working out on camera, being comfortable on camera, learning and getting better every single day. Okay, I myself from a year from now, I expect to be way. I expect to look back on, on videos and be like, why did I ever post that? You know what I'm saying? Because it's about consistent growth. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna start a YouTube channel, if you're gonna start a diet, if you're gonna start fucking anything, always look for better ways to do what you're doing. Stay consistent and don't quit because like the more you do something you hear all these fucking successful people they always say this shit they're just like if you keep pushing at whatever you want to do and keep learning and getting better eventually it's gonna work out it might be in six months and it might be in ten years you don't know but don't fucking quit because if you quit that's the only way to ensure that you won't win that's the only way to ensure that you're gonna fail so that's that's what I want to get through to y'all long as y'all remember three things y'all gonna be alright that's if you train good, eat good, and sleep good, then that's a good-ass life.